When my grandchildren were younger, one of our favorite things to do together was read stories. Among their favorites were the Frog and Toad books. Many times we read, Frog and Toad are friends. Frog and Toad do things together. They share when they are sad and they share when they're happy, sitting down together and being sad, sitting down together and being happy. They care about one another and show that in real practical ways. When Frog laments that he does not get anything in his mailbox, Toad sends him a letter by snail mail. Literally, a snail brings a letter to the mailbox. The book was written in 1970. I'm not sure what the equivalent today would be. Frog and Toad laugh together and take joy in each other's company. Fun conversations came up each time we read the book. Who are your friends? What do you do with them? What's important about them? It was fascinating to watch as the girls grew older how these responses changed. I wonder if these are some of the same questions we might ask. During this past year, how we define friends, how we interact with them has changed. FaceTime and Zoom have become important parts of our friendship. We have become more aware of the importance of friends and look forward to being able to be with them again. Our gospel lesson today comes before Jesus is betrayed and taken away. He is with his disciples. Jesus says some pretty amazing things to them. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, but I have called you friends. Jesus invites the disciples and us to be his friends. That's pretty amazing. So what's that all about? And how do we live as friends of Jesus? A couple of thoughts about friendship. Friends want the same thing. Not necessarily superficial things like sharing tastes in food and favorite things. It is, after all, conceivable that a vegetarian Trojans fan and a steak-eating Bruin could be friends. But it's more about common values like honesty, kindness, and generosity. And even deeper, recognizing that the well-being of one is affected by the words and actions of the other. We could get into complicated psychological stuff here. I don't mean some kind of codependency or assuming responsibility for the things that are not ours to be responsible for. But friends want to do that which brings joy and fulfillment to the other. And that includes friendship with Jesus. Jesus tells his disciples that he wants his joy to be in them, complete joy. That joy comes from fulfilling what Jesus desires, that we love one another as Jesus loves us. To know that love of God and to live that love of God brings joy. Friends speak their minds to each other openly, fully, without fear. Real friends do not withhold thoughts, feelings, desires, expectations from each other. There is something missing if you are afraid to be honest and open with a friend. That is true in our friendship with Jesus. Our prayer does not have to be cleaned up and made acceptable. God invites us to share our deepest desires, our deepest pains, anger, and fear, even when we think that it will disappoint God, even when we think it's not who we're supposed to be. God knows us and loves us. Think of when Jesus invited his disciples to be friends before going out to Gethsemane, the betrayal, the ones who deserted him, and ultimately the cross. Knowing what he knew, the invitation was still extended. Perfection is not a requirement to be a friend of Jesus. Friends hold each other accountable. Real friends expect a lot of each other. 
A real friend is one who is faithful to the relationship and keeps the promises that are made. To be a friend of Jesus is not a one hour on Sunday morning thing, but an identity. It is who we are and what we do 24 seven. We get to live this friendship with Jesus, not just when it is convenient, not just when it doesn't cost too much, but always. Jesus has promised to be with us always. In response, we strive to live with Jesus all the time. Friends need each other. There can be no real friendship when one person holds all the power, has no needs, or is inv invulnerable from hurt. The other is then powerless and vulnerable. In Jesus, God has cast God's lot with us. We matter to God, and what we do matters to God. Jesus makes that plain over and over. We are loved and wanted and longed for. And we are needed to share the good news, to live the good news, to reach out to those whom God created and loves. Jesus tells his disciples that they are to bear fruit, fruit which grows from God's love. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, describes such fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To love Jesus, to be the friend of Jesus, can change our very being, can help us to grow into persons bearing those fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And the fruit is not just for us. To be a kind and generous person in Christ is to reach out and work and help others. What does that fruit look like in your life? How does that fruit nourish you and those around you? What does it look like in the life of St. Michael? To be a friend of Jesus is bliss and it is challenging. Jesus has called us his friends. As Jesus' friends, it is our joy and our struggle to grow to be more like him, to listen to him, to respond to him. We get to walk in the cool of the evening with him, friend to friend, to sit and rest a while, to love and be with one another, to know the hard work that stretches and challenges us, to know peace and joy in his company. Jesus said, I call you friends. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.